G'day guys. Um, this is a video on raw milk. With, if we look through history, we'll see that raw milk, um, going back to you know antiquity and even earlier from the early days of uh, the domestication of animals, there are all sorts of stories of early physicians and physicians in antiquity that talk about the therapeutic effects of milk, of raw milk. Um, we, you know, even all the way to pre-pasteurize, pasteurization up until, you know, the twenties, the thirties, um, milk was used, um, around the world in different parts as a, a therapeutic means for the, you know, gut ailments, um, and other sort of con a number of other different conditions, um, viral bacterial, fungal, and uh, many numerous type of pathogen-related issues. But, uh, I mean, a lot of that was anecdotal. Physicians saw that they had a positive effect and they used it. Some swear by it, um, some wrote books about it, and some had whole clinics that were dedicated to raw milk consumption and using raw milk as a therapeutic means. We've noticed in recent times in places like in Africa, um, where COVID has actually moved through the populations in many areas. But, uh, you know, when it comes to the Maasai, Mary Ruddock was there and she said, didn't see it in that population. So are the Maasai, because of their milk consumption, immune to COVID? You know, maybe the sun and something very important, a substance in raw milk um, is combining to give them that extra protection compared to other Africans. I mean, especially in those in cities who are more exposed to kibble and seed oils nowadays, unfortunately. So the, I've talked about in the past about the differences between raw milk and pasteurised milk. Pasteurised milk and raw milk don't have a lot of differences in terms of macros, but they do have substantial differences in a number of peptides, a number of um, factors, important factors, and a number of... Um, micronutrients of differing sorts. Now, the fat-soluble vitamins, you don't get a lot of change. With a water-soluble vitamins, you get some. Vitamin C gets annihilated. But uh, there's also important elements like lactoferrin. Yes. So that's the one we're going to sort of look at. Um, an important sort of... Uh, in this realm, I believe that uh, due to, I mean, I've talked about lactoferrin before as a lectin binding, um, uh, you know, pretty much uh, a hero. That people in the past, when they did consume some carbs, I mean, it was seasonal. I mean, because of lack of refrigeration, a majority of our foods were things that were perishable and there were animal products and things that basically could until they were slaughtered or until the you know the byproducts were actually accessed or the or basically certain food products were directly like milk in particular were um accessed you know you didn't really need refrigeration you know it was all fresh bottled and delivered to your locality from the local farmers around that locality or around, you know, you had a lot of dairy farms around cities. Um, now they tend to be further away, but in the, in the old days, they used to be around cities, a lot of these sort of things, activities. And people had access to these things. And, uh, you know, they had, um, you know, these elements in their diet, which we don't have today. Today we have more kibble and stuff like that and seed oils, but we have less of these important animal nutrients, foods. Let me just share my screen. So this is a review 
an article review um, from the Journal of Infection and Chemotherapy, Lactoferrin for Prevention of Common Viral Infections. Ah, yes. All through, oops, overshot. All through lactoferrin has many biological functions. Host protective effects against pathogenic microorganisms, including bacteria, fungi, and viruses are regarded as one of the most important. Here we review research on the protective role lactoferrin administration against common viral infections. Many studies have shown that in vitro, so that's in petri dish, antiviral activities of lactoferrin against viral pathogens that cause common infections such as the common cold, influenza, gastroenteritis. So that's, you know, 50% of gastroenteritis tend to be um, norovirus. So it's a very contagious virus that causes vomiting and diarrhea. Um, anyone can get infected and sick with norovirus. Um, well, most people, there are a few. Um, uh, you can get um, uh, norovirus from having direct contact with an infected person. Also, if you touch their utensils or, you know, French kiss or, you know, anything else and they have it, you'll get it, if, especially if you're susceptible. Now, at least 50% of gastroenteritis, a foodborne illness due to norovirus. So this is the main, so, so basically importantly prepare food or contaminated water and travel or residence in areas of poor sanitation. Uh, yes. And uh, that's one of the main, um, when we're looking at uh, the SNPs, single nuclear polymorphisms, is the RS601338. Um, and it's the alleles, which is the homozygous AA, are immune to the Nora virus. Aren't they lucky? Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I've got the GGs. Yes, I've got the GGs. Sounds like fucking diarrhea, verbal diarrhea on my part. Anyway, so I'm one of those people that are very highly susceptible. <laughs> uh, but if you're heterozygous, you're also susceptible. So, which is a large part of the population. So when we're looking at, you know, populations like the Chinese or the Japanese, they're nearly practically 100%. Um, when we're looking at Northern Europeans, at least 30 are protected and Southern uh, about 24%, um, 22%. The Lukha in uh, Kenya and the Maasai about only 16%, Mexicans about 9%, um, Indians about four in the US, so North American Indians. And well, that's that group, but uh, you know, they seem to be all uh, very similar. Those of African ancestry, about you know, 30% as well. Nigerians, about 27%. But you know, even if you most, most people up to about 30%, so at least 70 to 100% depending on which part of the world you come from, which is the overwhelming majority of the population, are susceptible, you know, one way or another. So it's the sort of the travellers or the, they call it the, they call it sometimes the, um, you know, the cruise ship, um, uh, you know, you know, disease or, um, uh, you know, in other parts of the world, it's the sort of uh, the barley belly and all sorts of things. But basically, it's, you know, it depends where you are. It's got different names, but generally speaking, it's the same damn thing. It's a gastrointestinal um, issue. And in the past, I had some of the worst effects. And I can tell you, I suffered quite a bit. And I had, in some cases, you know, days off from work. I was so bad. Um, 
I sometimes even struggled to keep up to have enough sick leave. Um, one year I was so bad, you know. So yes, it was. I was munching on a lot of that refined sugar, kibble eating. Um, at my, you could say, kibble eating pinnacle, that I had a lot of these gut problems. And then when I moved more closer to animal foods, and in particular when I included a lot of raw milk in my diet. Um, it really eliminated a lot of this problem. Uh, obviously, I also lactoferrin supplementation I've used in the past for exactly those reasons. So especially in winter, I usually keep some in um, for, but for these sort of coronaviruses in particular as well, but a whole lot of other things. And it's basically kept at bay a lot of these problems for me in that regard. So mm. an N of one, you say, yes, an N of one. So let's move on. So many studies have shown that in um, which we covered that. Yep, the gastroenter gastroenteritis, summer cold and herpes. Ah, yes. Many lovers suffer, suffer of that, yes. Where lactoferrin inhibits mainly viral attachments to the target cell. And that's what we definitely want. We want to inhibit the damn thing getting into the target cell, yes. Recently, studies indicate that in vivo inside an organism, Protective effects of lactoferrin by oral administration against common viral infections has been increasing. For instance, norovirus is an extremely important emerging human pathogen. Yes, you know, kibble eating culture, it definitely is. Yes, a lot of people have a lot of gut problems, diarrhea and all sorts of problems. Mm, I wonder why. Mm, not enough lactoferrin, not enough raw milk, not enough animal foods you vagoons out there that that say so many slanderous things against milk. Mm. You pay, the milk God has condemned you to suffer these awful ailments in your gut. Anyway, enough of, that's enough comedy for the, for, for the day. Now, for instance, is that causes... A, a majority of gastroenteritis outbreaks worldwide and may be a, tar a target candidate for lactoferrin. Yes, definitely, I think lactoferrin, raw milk. We don't need to basically go for the supplemental stuff. This is sort of my, what I call my COVID um, protection um, protocol, which I haven't really covered properly. I, I, it's a video that I need to make, but I, I will make. Um, I talk about all these things in without, but I will have to make a specific video covering all this. Um, yes, expect it in the next, hopefully next week, if I can pull my finger out. Anyway, lactoferrin consumption reduced the incidence of noroviral gastroenteritis in children and a similar effect was observed in a wide range of, in a wide range of ages in a preliminary survey, and I can, I can really te testify to that. It has really improved things for me. Um, you know, I mean, it's like I've been cured from gastroenteritis. I'm not kidding you. I've had a lot of issues in the past. And so raw milk and this sort of stuff seems to have basically done the trick and uh, I just don't suffer those things anymore. Um, some would call it a miracle. I would just call it lactoferrin. Anyway, let's move on. A recent in vitro study reported lactoferrin inhibits both cellular attachments of the marine norovirus a virus closely related to the human norovirus and viral replication in the cell by inducing antiviral cytokine interferon. Ah, uh, yes, our favourite 
Um, so interferon A and B, you know, so interferon, look, even coronaviruses, the way they actually, and like most viruses, the way they actually get into the body and actually try to replicate and all that is basically from suppressing interferons. It's one of their first things they do. They go out of their way to suppress. It's one thing to basically really stomp on the innate immune system. And it's the way it works. With lactoferrin, you're actually upregulating. You're, you're actually increasing the amount of interferon, which is a good bloody thing. Anyway, lactoferrin as administered has also enhances natural killer cells. Yes. Mm. Not only inter interferon, but also natural killer cells activity. TH1 cytokine responses. So, yes, even those cytokines that are needed but need to be well regulated with vitamin D. Remember, let's not forget sun and milk. Yes. And meat, which lead to protection against viral infections. In conclusion, interferon consumption may protect the host from viral infections through inhibiting the attachment of a virus to the cell replication of the cell of the virus in the cell and enhancements of systemic immune function. So supports the immune system and also inhibits the, you know, viruses from getting inside the cell or even replicating inside the cell. So it plays a lot of different roles and it usually plays it through modulating and through being a mediator to these other systems. Um, so enhancing them or upregulating them. So that sort of thing, or which is very important. So let's move on. Immunomodularity effects of lactoferrin. Lactoferrin is an iron binding glycoprotein of transferrin family, which is expressed in most biological fluids, in particular high levels in mammalian milk. Uh, yes, mummy's milk. Its multiple activities lie in its capacity to bind iron to the and to interact with the molecular and cellular components of hosts and pathogens. Lactoferrin can bind and sequester lipopolysaccharides, mm. thus preventing pro-inflammatory path activation, sepsis, and tissue damage. We know that LPS can uh, cause you know it's the little hairline thing that gets cleaved off on the bacteria it sort of sheds to be more precise it sheds and that can actually if you've got leaky gut can actually end up with quite a lot in the actual bloodstream or if you've got a cut and you get a severe infection and you get a lot of release you can actually get septic shock and stuff like that it basically um, is very protective in that regard in both tissue damage and sepsis. So, and in dealing with lipopolysaccharides, LPS, yes, as one um, academic cause, a little piece of shit. Anyway, he's a bit of a vagoon anyway, but you know what I mean, you know him. Um, lactoferrin is also considered a cell secreted mediator that bridges the innate and adaptive immune responses. That's really important that it actually supports both the innate, you know, the first line of defense, oh, when things come in to stop the little buggers and the adaptive, which is, you know, that you get the antibody response. So it helps, it supports, you know, the entire immune system really. In recent years, much has been learnt about the mechanisms by which lactoferrin exerts its activities. This review summarizes the recent advances in understanding mechanisms underlying the multifunctional role of lactoferrin and provides a future perspective on the potential prophylactic and therapeutic applications, so both to protect and to provide therapeutic applications for us. Anyway, now, effects. This was in the Canadian Science Publish. Publishing, Chemistry and Cell Biology, Effects of Lactoferrin on the Production of Interferon Lambda by the Human Intestinal Epithelial Cell Line, HTE29. 
So your gut, basically. We examine in vitro effects of bovine lactoferrin. Ah, yes, cow's milk, sourced lactoferrin. On the production of interferon L, an antiviral cytokine important for the defense of enterocytes using the human intestinal epithelial cell lines, H. T29. I mean, they use these in petri dishes to, to test different things. Um, you know, HT29 cells were treated with lactoferrin for one hour, and the cultures were simulated with polyenocinylene polycyclic acid, and lactoferrin increased the concentrations of IF. Of IFNL interferon in the culture supernated after simulation in a dose dependent manner. So depending on the amount of, you know, that acid that basically had an effect, there was a dose dependent response, which means that it actually has that sort of also modulating effect as we saw in the previous one saying, a similar increase in the concentration of interferon lambda was observed in the, or lambda as it's said in the Greek word. That's what it is. It's an L, Greek L, supernet of cells washed between the treatment of lactoferrin and simulation of the poly, the IC acid um, at six and 24 are for simulation of poly one, the early and later phases respectively. Treated cultures contain significantly high concentrations of interferon L1 in the cultures super and significantly higher interferon L1 and interferon L2 mRNA levels than controls. These results suggest that lactoferrin activates the innate cellular immunity of the enterocytes. So that's, you know, you know those little hairline things that are, um, you know, where you, you absorb a lot of your, a lot of your st stuff. That's what they're talking about in the endothelial, in, oh, sorry, in the, in, in the intestinal tract. Um, that's what they're talking about, the enterocytes, um, to double strand RNA and increase the production of interferon lambda. So we can actually see quite clearly that the your endothelium, your basically your gut, um, in response to something that is, you know, pro you know, causing problems and stuff like that. Um, it's basically, you know, when you the control doesn't have that same response, but when you throw in, um, uh, you know, lactoferrin, it really ramps up um, uh, the defensive part of your immune system, which is what you really want. Because in the early stages, when a virus comes in or bacterial pathogenic bacteria comes in and all that, it really, it really tries to trick the immune system. It really tries to hide, to get in, to get under the radar, so to speak. What lactoferrin is doing is basically saying, hold on, I can see you, mate. I'm going to basically tell the immune system, there he is, go after him. So it's actually supporting the immune system to detect these things in your gut and pounce on them, which is a good thing. And it, and it seems to, you know, from the other studies that we saw about the norovirus and all that, it seems to pounce on a lot of things. Um, the other thing that I didn't point out, which was quite important when we're looking at this part back here, when we're looking at fungi and all that as well, obviously bacteria, we don't need to talk about that. We talk about the pathogenics. I've talked about ad nauseum in the past, but the fungi, we're really talking about things like thrush, a lot of women suffer um, things, things like basically um, candida, those sort of things. We're talking about lactoferrin is going to go after these things. It's going to really put them back in their, in their box and limit their misbehavior. So very, very important for a lot of people in that regard. So let's move on and take a bit of a look 
at, you know, on interferon, so we get a really good idea. Interferons, which we know the lactoferrin actually upregulates um, interferon production. Interferons are proteins that are part of the natural defenses. They tell the immune system that germs or cancer cells Yes, all cancer cells for goons. Yes, raw milk is protective against those sort of things. It's not a cause because that's just a, a, an association, a bonkers association of people eating seed oils and refined sugars. And yes, they have a bit of milk. Whoopee, what an association. You know, how ridiculous is that? You know, it doesn't make, it does those pseudo junk epidemiological garbage excrement of studies um, basically prove absolutely nothing. Here we've got true mechanisms when we're actually looking at these. These are well recognized. We know that interferons, this is, this is in the books, medical books, biological books and stuff like that. Doctors read this and know that interferons have these effects. Okay, so this is not basically Harry saying things. This is actually, this is run of the mill. This is WebMD. This is basically um, standard stuff that is well known for decades. This is not new stuff. This is well recognized in oncology in, amongst MDs that interfere on. So, I mean, they even have medical stuff that they intravenously basically um, or they basically inject into people to basically protect them or to deal with a lot of pathogens or sepsis or stuff like that. So these are part of the therapeutics. You don't have to pay for them, just drink your raw milk. So they tell the, um, uh, tell the immune system that germs or cancer cells are in your body. Yes, it's good that they can actually recognize those things. Hmm. Milk seems to tell the body that there's nasties around that need to be eliminated. And they trigger killer immune cells, the natural killer cells, to fight those invaders. Ah, oh, yes, get them. Interferon got their names. Interferon, sorry, got their names because they interfere with viruses. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, don't we have one that actually's ravaging the world, apparently? Mm. Yes. That is coronavirus. Yes, wouldn't wouldn't exactly say ravaging, but you know what? Well, that's what the media tells us anyway. Maybe they're not getting enough raw milk, those cockwombles. So interferon um, uh, interferes with viruses and keeps them from multiplying. Exactly what the earlier stuff said. Um, that interferon does that. And what increases interferon? Hmm. Lactoferon. Yes. In 1986, the first lab made interferon. Ah, yes, they made the artificial stuff. It was created to treat certain types of cancer. Hmm. I thought that milk caused cancer, apparently, according to the Vagoons. I wonder why the Maasai aren't riddled with the stuff and they seem to not have any of that sort of stuff. Maybe they pray very heavily to God and get protection. It's not the lactoferrin. It couldn't be the milk. Definitely not. The Vagoon ideology would not accept that. It does not comply with Vagoon um, dogma. It was one of the earliest treatments to work with you your immune system to fight illnesses and was later approved as a treatment for several other conditions, including hepatitis and multiple sclerosis. How do they work? Amongst every cell in your, almost every cell in your body makes interferons. I wonder why. Yes. Cells that have been infected with viruses or other germs give off interferons. And we saw the thing, the previous one that I showed about the petri dish, the ones with the, the, um, the cell lines, the human cell lines from the gut. 
exactly. They all produced when they were given lactoferrin. So they got the lactoferrin, then they produced, you know. So here, artificially, the doctors have created, you know, big pharma. Don't, let's destroy raw milk. Let's destroy raw milk. Let's get rid of raw milk. We can produce lacto in interferon for you. You don't have to produce it naturally by drinking raw milk. No, we won't have that. We will basically sell it to you at a very high price. So, and interferon alpha and interferon beta, as we were talking for, as a warning signal to the immune system. Yes, it warns the immune system, boys and girls. The A and B, remember where we talked about the A and B? And which one was it? Yep. A and B interferon. Remember we talked about that. It actually warns the immune system to get ready and respond. That triggers immune cells called white blood cells to release interferon gamma which that other Petri dish experiment showed us. Got it? To fight the germs. Ah, yes. Interferon may... Interferon works in a few different ways. They alter... Uh, sorry, alert your immune system so it can go after the virus or cancer. Yes. So if cancer cells are suppressing the immune system or cancer or viruses are suppressing the immune system, the innate immune system, the defensive things, what do we need? Raw milk to strengthen the interferon response so we can actually get the immune system to be alerted to identify these nasties. Mm. Help your immune system recognize the virus or cancer. Tell immune cells to attack. Take them out with the vagoons. Stop viruses and cancer cells from growing and dividing. Help healthy cells fight infections. Ah, yes. And what conditions do interferons treat? Interferon alpha treat viral infections, including... Chronic hepatitis C, Haley cell leukemia, Kaposi um, sarcoma caused by AIDS, chronic myoglenoma, leukemia, chronic hepatitis, lymphoma, and malignant melanoma. Ah, yes, we've got plenty of that in Australia. Melanomas, genital warts, mm, those sexual deviants. Mm got plenty of those in Australia as well. But the interferons aren't used to off as often to treat these diseases. New drugs have come along that work better and faster with a lot of side effects. Horrendous amount of side effects. Yes, yes. They don't tell you that. This is the sort of propaganda side, you know, just covering that as well. Inhaled interferon beta is being studied to see if it can help treat COVID-19 infections. Why not have some milk, raw milk? You know, I mean, why freaking bother paying big pharma when you can have some raw milk? Let's cover that point. The biology of lactoferrin as iron binding protein that can help defend against viruses and bacteria. I'll just cover this first part. The um, interferon is a nutrient classically found in mammalian milk. Uh, yes. It binds iron and is transferred via a variety of receptors into and between cells, serum, bile, and serum. Cerebral spinal fluid. Yes, we know a lot of the um, uh, the adaptive immune system can be found in those sort of areas. In particular, though, there is evidence that it can bind to at least some of the receptors used by coronaviruses like the flu and COVID. 
and thereby block their entry. Oh, yes, block their entry. Of importance are hepsin sulfate, um, proteoglycans, mm. yes, the goons, you guys lack a lot of sulfur, remember. Why? Too many oxalates in your diet, my dear friends. And the host receptor angiotensin converting enzyme 2, the ACE2, which we've been, everybody knows about nowadays, I hope. As based on other activities, lactoferrin may prevent severe acute respiratory syndrome, COVID-2, uh, from attaching to the host cells. Mm, you don't want them attaching and you don't want them replicating. Lactoferrin and more significantly enteric coated lactoferrin because of increased bioavailability may um, consequently be a preventative therapeutic value during the present of COVID-19 pandemic. Mm, probably the word, that last word will will beg to disagree. Um, uh, you know, yes, it is slightly worse than the flu, but it, I wouldn't call it a, a 1918 epidemic, pandemic that has killed millions upon millions. You know, the numbers just don't stack up in the same way. But, you know, when it comes to coronaviruses, flu, COVID, SARS-1, SARS-2 and all that, um, pretty much this little beauty, lactoferrin, can really do wonders. Interferon beta treats different types of multiple sclerosis. Mm, who would have known? Milk? Ah, yes. Get yourself a goat. Mm. And don't do what that other vagoon doctor does to the goat. No, drink its milk, but don't do anything inappropriate to the goat. It eases inflammation in your brain and spinal cord to prevent nerve damage. Wonderful stuff, wouldn't you say? Yes, wonderful stuff. Yes, we just need to basically not buy it because it's quite expensive from the big farmer, but we need to actually get the body to create it. Hmm, I wonder what we should drink. Hmm, very difficult to work out if you're a vagoon. Interferon gamma 1b, active immune, treats chronic granulomatous disease, which affects the way your immune system works, and severe malignant osteopetrosis, which affects your bones. So as you can see, bone disease, um, autoimmune and immune problems and all that. Yeah, lactoferrin seems to really help with all that sort of stuff. It's wonderful stuff, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Certain types of interferon medi medications have a chemical called polyphenolin glycan added to them. PEG makes the, med uh, the medicine last longer in your body so they don't need as many shots. These are called um, pegiterone drugs. I'm not going to go into that now. Um, I do have some issues with some of this sort of stuff. But anyway, I'm not going to go into it. It's for another day that I'll discuss some of the good and bad sides of all that sort of stuff. Anyway, how do you take interferon? We won't. I think we've covered most of that. We'll just go down to the benefits. Um, we're not ignore them, you know, interferon man made version proteins, versions of proteins your body makes. These drugs, we're not going to talk about the drugs work with the immune system. Nah, and nah, we get we get it from the milk, find and attack viruses and cancer. They can stop viruses and cancer cells from growing, spreading, prevent other cells from getting infected. If you have multiple sclerosis, MS they can make you less likely to have a flare up and slow damage to your brain and spinal cord. Heart problems, a small number of people who have treated with interferon can have a fast or irregular heartbeat or low blood pressure.
And the low blood pressure is a good thing. Let's put it that way. Mental health conditions. And some people have said that they feel depressed or thinking about suicide while taking interferon. Um, if you have depression or other mental health, doctors may watch closely while you take a, one of these drugs and all that. A lot of these studies that talk about this sort of stuff are with medicine plus interfere and all that and who knows what side effects and all that and confounding variables so a lot of these sort of stuff is the this is not stuff that's actually from derived from lactoferrin this is basically a certain doses with other medication and stuff like that so just keep that in mind about this eye disease Interferon could make some eye diseases worse. Um, you know, but that's in large amounts. But we should we should know about these things. Everyone should have vision check before um, starting starting on these drugs. And that's the problem. It's the drugs and that other stuff that I said about earlier. Remember, I talked about the one that the long the long standing stuff. It's a problem because it basically what it does is it puts interferon in a very hyper state we don't want that we want basically you get the you, you consume the milk you get the lactoferrin in there you get a response and then it's sort of you know it's this drop off you know and that's how the body gets and responds and all that where you know they say in rare case interferon can make thyroid gland overactive hyperthyroidism or underactive hyper hypothyroidism but a lot of this is the medication and the combination with the, that other stuff as well so just keep all that in mind but i you know i need to show all this as well you know shortness of breath pneumonia bronchitis worse um lung diseases blah 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 but the reality is we know interferons really do a lot of positive things when it comes to viruses and bacteria and health problems like that so, but in these pharmaceutical preparations, I would say there are so many other compounds in these pharmaceutical um, preparations. When we look at lactoferrin, we don't see any of this sort of stuff. When we see interferon that is made by big pharma, we do see these conditions. And that's what they're talking about. They're talking about treatment of interferon, that means this drug. These are drugs. This is a drug version with interferon and a number of other things in there. Um, I have a lot of issues with these. Un, I call them unnatural preparations. You guys should be aware of them, that that is the case. But I don't. Um, I see this as just bullshit and highly confounded because of the way it's actually um, provided. This is an unnatural way. These are very high doses and you tend to get, because remember, it also pushes up remember, certain cytokines. Now you don't want them too high. You want some, you want certain things response, which you will get from lactoferrin. You'll get a certain good, certain dis dose response to the amount that's required, but you won't get this over-exaggerated amount you can get with these sort of pharmaceutical preparations. And that's the problem with this sort of stuff. You guys need to be aware, this is why, do not, if a doctor tells you that they want to put you on a medical interferon, tell them no. Tell them, I drink raw milk. I get a much lower dose in a more natural protective level without going too high it's like anything you know you push things too high whether it's you know you can push things to toxic levels selenium is an example you know great if you get a good dose you go to excessive amounts there's potential risks there with anything you know so it's the dose dependency a lot of these drugs they are very high doses and they're also very, very narrow 
in the way you know they are a specific type. They're not like the lact like lactoferrin will actually in influence a number of these different interferons, lambda, alpha, beta, all these in in different ways in different tissues and all that. This is sort of like one type systemic very different. So keep that in mind because some people will throw this at you and say, oh, what about this? These are pharmaceutical stuff. This is not the same that you get from food. Okay. When we look at the, the food stuff before, we did not see any of this sort of stuff whatsoever. This is why, you know, I suspect um, in the past when we didn't have these pharmaceutical versions, we did not see side effects. We did not see any issues. What we did see is really a lot of people, shitloads of anecdotes. Yes, they weren't, they didn't do randomized control studies back then. They just did, did general observational type studies and general clinical studies that were done. And a lot of them had no controls and stuff like that. So people can sort of argue against those. But at the end of the day, there's a, there was a horrendous amount of anecdotes back then of people basically getting lactoferrin from raw milk and basically seeing a lot of, you know, improvements to their health. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, you know, a bit of myth busting on the raw milk um, uh, side of things. Anyway, see us.